It's a pleasure to be here this morning with so many distinguished friends, colleagues, collaborators, um, the Honourable Lucia, the Minister for Water, our Chairman, the President, the Managing Partner, Vasily Shah, and all the partners that are here. It's an absolute pleasure. Um, it falls on me to start the proceedings with regards to our formal bit about digital assets and what they mean, what they are. Is this working? Can you guys hear me? Oh, this is working fine. So we'll start with uh, a bit of an introduction. My name is Dr. Cameron Sheikh. I am the MD for Morgan and Child Accountants. We're a national firm in the UK with offices across uh, other parts of the world. And it is my privilege to be the president for Adam Global Europe and the country head for the UK. This platform is absolutely amazing, as uh, our president and our chairman mentioned earlier on. It's a collaboration that brings across cross continents, cross professions, and also providing a platform which can help us innovate, develop, and grow long term. The topic today I'm presenting is the integration of digital assets into the UK accounting system. I'm, I'm trying to keep it a bit broader because sometimes we talk about accounts and audit and digital assets, but anything that comes to that becomes slightly boring. So I'm going to expand it slightly and I'm going to do a bit of a presentation with the integration as we discussed uh, as part of the topic and also to look at how it interacts with UK and UAE. I would also make sure that to ensure everybody's awake, I'm going to ask a few questions whilst I'm going across, and hence I'm not just standing over there. So when I ask you to say yes, no, or raise your hand, please do, because if you don't, I'm going to focus on you, I'm going to come to you, I'm going to come down there and say, can you please tell me the answer to this question? So please interact, it would be brilliant, it would be fantastic, it will wake us up a little bit, I know we've had a lot of traffic coming in, uh, into Dubai, which is brilliant, which means there's a lot of business happening in the region, and I think we've had our coffees and teas, so we should be okay. So what's the latest regulations and impact on multilateral businesses, uh, integration of digital assets into the UK? Let's have a look. Let me see if I can make this work. Technology. Ah, right, so there we go. So where do we start? What are digital assets? First question, does everybody know what a digital asset is? Uh, raising hands is fine, don't have to say yes, I know. Just raising hands, fantastic. So there's a fair few people, good. Don't be shy, come on, you can all, all raise your hands. Fantastic, thank you. So yes, digital assets. Just to give you very brief, what is digital assets? Digital, by the fair nature of the, the word digital, is something that's digital. That's not very explicit, is it? Digital assets, in reality, is any assets that we hold, which is not conventional assets. So what's a conventional asset? Anybody can shout at one? Fiat, fiat okay, that's, the, that, that's a conventional one we have, yes? Fiat. When you think of asset, what do we think of? What, does, what comes to mind? Real estate, absolutely. So the, the first thing in the Asian subcontinent that we look at, or even in Europe where I'm from, when you talk about assets, the first thing you think about is real estate, bricks and mortar. You've got assets like cars, you've got assets like gold, fiat, uh, having digital uh, currency, I don't know how much of an asset fiat will be in the future, but we can come and we can discuss that later. But that's what a digital asset is. A digital asset is something that's not your conventional asset that's available to us, which is fixed, which is tangible, so it's an intangible asset. Now, can somebody shout out the most well-known digital asset that we know about? Bitcoin, don't we love BTC? Bitcoin. So, Bitcoin is one of the digital assets that is very prevalent. It's been going on for some time and it's been in the marketplace. Now, does anybody know how much a Bitcoin is this morning? 76, you wish 76. It's $73,000, but good try. I like it. So, $73,000 is what a Bitcoin is worth. Now, exactly 10 years from today, so 2014, 30th of October. How much was a Bitcoin? On average, I mean, just to shout out. Give me some figures, guys. Just raise your hands and give me a figure. Six thousand. Six thousand. Ten pence. Ten pence, right? We've got a bit of a contrast. Any more takers? Six thousand. Ten pence. Anybody in the middle or more? 
I need two more. 10,000? So 10,000 and one more? 2,000. Right, this is it. This is the, I love it. I love it. This interaction is good. It's going to make the time go quicker. It was actually 234 pounds, or dollars, sorry. 234 dollars, 10 years exactly today, 2014. So that tells you the power of what we were talking about earlier, the blockchain, the power of innovation, the power of the new technology, the disrupting technology that's coming to the marketplace, which now shows us something that was worth 234 pounds, sorry, dollars, I'm going to pounds. British, we like to do everything in pounds. So $234 to $73,000 this morning. Now, what does that tell us? To me, as an accountant, an auditor, somebody who works in economics, or in that section, it tells me that there is a fantastic demand for this product. There is a huge growth in this line, because I don't know of any real estate, I don't know of any car, I don't know of any gold that I've bought, which was worth $235, in 2014, 30th of October, is now worth 73,000. If anybody does, please raise your hand, because I don't own any assets. Now that's the power of what we're discussing today, digital assets. So digital assets aren't just the brick, uh, Bitcoins, so it's not just cryptocurrency, that's where it falls into. You've also got other digital assets. There's tokenized assets. Now digital assets, tokenized assets, you've got NFTs. Has anybody heard of NFTs? Has anybody got NFTs? Okay, that's good. So again, these are digital assets that are out there, and this is a whole uh, width and breadth of all the digital assets that are available as it stands today. Some of them are regulated, some of them are non. These work and operate, as the good professor said earlier on, on blockchain. Now we know a lot of, of us have heard about blockchain, what, what it does, how it works, how it operates, how many channels we have to go through for your Bitcoin to get through from one to another. Sometimes it says one if you're an exchange, or it's six if you're not an exchange. So it's all of these things that collaborate into your digital asset. Why is it relevant? Again, when we're looking at digital assets, a lot of businesses are adapting it into their businesses, whether they're local businesses, national businesses, organizations, individuals. If somebody had a Bitcoin 10 years ago, they'd made quite a bit of money. If they had a few 10 years ago, I know I remember a story of an individual who actually had nine bitcoins in exchange for services they provided and the person couldn't pay them. When they sat on those nine bitcoins, you can imagine how much it was worth uh, in 2021 when we had the peak and they became a millionaire overnight and just go, fantastic, this is what I've got, I want this, I love this. And this is the power of uh, assets. They're, with the adaption of, of bitcoin or digital currency, you also have the challenges like with everything else. Who would like to know the challenges? Nobody. We would want to know how we can use it to our benefit. Oh, at least we've got one taker, thank you, sir. Somebody's interacting. I'm, I am, I'm threatening. I am going to come down, and I'm going to come to you guys, and I'm going to tell you to raise your hands. If you don't raise your hands, I'm going to come to you. So with that comes the challenges of how to deal with it, whether it's accounting-wise, whether it's tax-wise, whether it's production-wise, whether it's security-wise. All of that comes along with that. And Today's presentation's focus is going to be on UK regulation, because I'm a Brit, uh, as some of us are in this room, um, what the IFSR treatments are, the tax treatments of it, the audit requirements, the impact global and UK markets and the outlook of it, and also the impact on multinational businesses uh, dealing with the UK and abroad as a subsidiary or as a holding company. It's going the wrong way. Right. So as accountants and lawyers, maybe sometimes health professionals because they have regulatory bodies, what do we look at? Who regulates what we're looking at? So who's regulating in the UK? So we have the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority. They're looking at regulating Bitcoin, digital assets, tokenized assets, NFTs. Not that they are able to do NFTs and uh, tokenized uh, coins at the moment in time, but they're very good at crypto. They're getting better and better. So is the UAE. We've also got the uh, the Bank of England, who started a um, CBDC uh, coin that we're looking to launch in the UK, which is very forward-thinking, started in April 2021. We've been working very firmly on bringing that across. Now, that tells you a lot about what we're looking at. Previously, when we were talking about fiat, we were saying, 
this is the way forward. Digital assets or cryptos is, is absolutely the wrong way to go. It's in the blockchain, nobody knows how much it is, nobody knows the value, yada, yada, yada. Today, UK government, April 21, they started. They want this. They want digital pound. And they're working towards it. April 23, then, two years on, and then December 23, they've made leaps and bounds, and they're building that cross. You've got regulations around it, there's tax treatment around it, there is more clarity that's coming on board for it. We've also got the, the regulatory focus. Why, why do we have regulators? Why, so don't look at the PowerPoint, why do we have regulators? There's a phone call coming. All oh, right, Ayush, our trainee at Adam Global. Well, that's a trainee's answer, and dare I say, it's a very good answer. Bloody good answer. Thank you, Ayush. Ayush is uh, one of our latest trainees at a Global Dubai office, based in Golden Island Building. Obviously, very intelligent kid. Yeah, claps will be, the applause will be there. This is the beauty of it. <laughs> Regulators make sure that people don't get conned. There is no fake money, there is no scams, there's no transactions which have no basis. And whatever is provided on that blockchain, on that digital platform, is verified and consumers are looked after. Because at the end of the day, if there's fake money, somebody's been done over. They've got the money they've been paid for buying something or selling something, which is worth nothing. It's not, as, as you say, it's not worth a piece of paper it's written on or it's printed on, which doesn't exist in the digital economy. But, you know, we've got to make sure that people are protected. So that's why the regulator is there to ensure that's there. Also, um, we've got issues in terms of cross-border. UK has some regulations. UAE has been one of the pivotal countries that's done some really good work with VARA. And as soon as they realized in 2022, March, that this was happening, along came VARA. And that started regulating people working in Dubai because all the innovative technology, all the new disruption starts in this region, in this country. So it's fantastic. Looking at that, we've got so many challenges across the board that we have to review. My favorite topic. Not. Tax. We love tax in the UK. You guys are about to taste the, the benefits of taxation in this country. I know you have VAT and you don't have any personal tax yet. Hopefully, it should be coming anytime soon. But you have corporation tax coming in. So, the one thing we always talk about in uh, the UK is death and taxes. So, you are going to die and you have to pay taxes. And all of you ha who have lived in the UK know you can't escape it uh, or you do get done. Now, there's certain types of taxation we look at, so what the UK government's done is they've gone back very quickly with the HMRC, who's one of the regulators, and reviewed it and go, right, how do we treat this digital currency? Previously, I'm going to ask this question. So, if five years ago I had a coin, a crypto coin, or cryptocurrency, I had a Bitcoin, where would it sit? It won't be in my pocket, that's for sure. It will sit on a crypto exchange, which is on a blockchain. Fantastic. Sorry? Yeah, absolutely. So if it's sitting on there, who was regulating it five years ago? Nobody. And when nobody's regulating it, who could see what was happening and who owned it? <laughs> exactly. And if you told somebody you had crypto, nobody would know. Now, with the regulations coming in, the beauty is you can do an AML. Uh, for those of you not in the accounting and legal profession, it's anti-money laundering. We have that prevalent in any jurisdiction that's looking after securing people. And in KYC, know your customer. Now, previously you couldn't do that. Now, we can. And that's the whole point of bringing it into regulation. So we can now manage where things are, where it's going, how we can monitor it, how we can ensure we protect the people, and also how we present it into the books and records that we have. So with the advent of corporation tax in the UAE, you would have to look at what assets people have got in terms of digital assets, and then present them onto the balance sheet. Uh, we've got the um, impact in the UK. So you've got corporation tax, you pay it. Any profit you make, you have to pay. If you made a loss, uh, you can set it off against your profits or against any digital asset income or uh, profits going forward. If you have capital gains, you pay tax on it. VAT, if you're a crypto exchange, 
you have to account for VAT, but if you're not a crypto exchange, at the moment in time, there is no VAT on uh, cryptocurrency or digital assets currently. Um, the impact uh, on the international organizations, like I said, you've got UK, you've got UAE, and they're very proactive. One's got VARA, one's looking at CBDC. So they're actively working towards a firm regulation, a clear guideline in terms of where this needs to go to. So when an auditor picks it up, they can go, right, well, it's A, B, C, and D, fantastic, tick the boxes, and I'm going to do my report, which we couldn't do before. The issue comes when the regulation is not uniform cross-border, and that's where multinational companies will have an issue. So we'll have something else in the UK, we'll have something else in Hong Kong, we'll have something else in Dubai, and certainly when you look at the whole structure, I'm now to do um, tax arbitrage, but I do all sorts of calculations, and I certainly go, oh my God, this is too difficult. But the beauty is we're moving in the right direction. We're moving in the direction where we're standardizing it across the board. And that's where um, I would come in next in terms of what we have in the UK. So we have IFRSs. Who's heard of IFRSs? They're very exciting things. Fantastic. Some accountants have raised their hands. So IFRS is very, very beautiful. They're fantastic bits of paperwork that you read and you go to sleep. No. You read and you implement for your clients. IFRSs are the guidelines that we use to ensure that across the board, everything stays standard. So we have an IFRS which says if you have a digital asset, it has to be recorded at the value or the cost. Whichever is higher, stunning science. Whichever is lower. So if it's impaired, which is the value's gone down, you then record it there. And that's very boring, but stay with me. You've also got IS2. Now this is where you're not having an asset, but your business is buying it. You're buying an asset and you're selling the asset. In that case, you keep it a stock, as you do with most things there. Now, what's the challenges that we face? We said 10 years ago it was 234. Today, it's 73,000. All in USD. Volatility. It's 73,000 today, might be 76 tomorrow. Might be 23, we don't know. So the, the change that's happening is very, very fast. And because it's not a digital platform, if we don't have the tools for us to be able to deal with it, we're left behind. You've got the impairment, as I discussed earlier on, and the IFRS limitations. I mentioned earlier that we are very, very good at dealing with cryptocurrency, but we're not very good at dealing with tokenized coins, and we're not very good at dealing with NFTs. I can. By all means, afterwards, if anybody wants any questions to ask um, after the event, we can talk about NFTs and talk about coins. It's very exciting stuff. We will do that. Um, now, there is no accountant and auditor who will do a presentation without putting that in. Why? Because this is, oh, this is, we love this. We, we, you know, we get up in the morning and you say, I'm going to go to the office and I'm going to pick something up and I'm going to audit it. Really? Right. Well, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Juliet. Yes, we, we're very excited. Every morning we get up and go, you know, I have dreams about all of the auditing stuff I need to do. I have wonderful visions of how I'm going to do things and put them into place. But the beauty of this is, now that we're regulating everything, or most of the things in the digital asset domain, we are now having tools for us to assist, for us to assist our customers, and for us to have, for us to be able to deliver a value in terms of what we provide. So previously, we just say, well, that's the balance on the crypto exchange. That's the balance I have. But now we have tools. We can use these tools to do the valuation of these assets, real time. Most auditors now dealing with digital assets are dealing with that. We can now verify who owns it. Before it was a stick, anybody who has a stick owns a digital asset. Now we can verify who owns it. You say it's my digital asset in this business, and it's my digital asset in this business. Suddenly your balance sheet is through the roof. But in reality, because there was no ownership check, we couldn't verify it. As an auditor, that was a big risk for us. And it's a big risk for investors, big risk for stakeholders, the banks, the customers, the shareholders, the suppliers, because the value will be overstated. Now, when we're looking at it, we can now look at the verification. Oh, it's relating to this individual, not even the company. Oh, it's relating to this company, not this one. And with all of that coming in place, We've got more value-added reports coming out from our audit, which we weren't able to do a few years ago when the crypto phenomena started. We've got the security and custody, and 
quickly going through the auditing framework, previously we didn't have manuals. Who audits digital assets in this room? Just show of hands. Right, nobody. Why do we think that is? It's the complexity we have to deal with, with digital assets. Unfortunately, we do in our firm. But again, you have, if you have the right tools behind the scenes and if you have the right verifications in place, you can actually do a really, really good job. And the value of you doing that work to the business, not the price, but the value is immense because there isn't a lot of people in the marketplace who are doing this. And because they're not doing it, what's happening? The people who are in this space are very low. They're not being serviced properly. This is the value proposition we bring here in collaboration. We're all in the same room, and suddenly we have a firm who deals with it, and there are other firms who want to deal with it. And we can bring that across the board, and that's the power of our global. This, this is absolutely brilliant. I mean, I, when I was putting this together, I thought, my God, this is, this is something phenomenal. So today, the market, the international global market value of crypto is, somebody read that too? Is 1.2 trillion, that's today. Now, what we're gonna do is say, right, if I had a crystal ball, well, accountants normally do, we call it forecasting or budgeting. We look forward and go, right, this is what we're going to do. Whether it happens or not, we don't know. Exactly the same way we've done this one, where we said in exactly 10 years, it will be worth 5 trillion. And you go, right, 5 trillion. Wow. From all of those years, it's only got to 1.2. But it's going to go four times that and more in 10 years. Now, going 25 years. Come on, it's there. Can you read it? 20 trillion dollars. That's a huge market. Who wants a share of that market? Raise your hand. Absolutely. I need more hands up. Who wants a share of that market, guys? Absolutely. We all want a share of that market. But do you know what? Because very, very quickly, the governments are going to realize that's the way forward. Fiat will be disappearing. We're looking at digital currency. UK is already looking at it. UAE was already exploring it. And you'll be over there. Because we have to be over there. Why do we have to be over there? Because when we're looking at this, this is more secure. It's easy to transact. Cross-border. 20 minutes, no charges. Depends if you're in UCTT or not. If you're on other platforms, it might be something different. But in reality, this is the future. I know we talk about no, but this is very risky and it's very volatile. Well, go into USDT. That's not risky. That's fixed with respect to the dollar. Put it in there, that's also digital currency. And when the governments come across with their own digital dirham, a digital pound, a digital dollar, that's where the market's growing. Because that's the way we're going forward to it. Fiat, the pieces of paper, we don't like fiat. Why don't we like fiat? I don't like fiat. Ah, come on, that's controversial. I'm not going to go down that route. No, we don't like fiat because it's inaccessible sometimes. When you're going across countries, you've got exchange rates, you're paying the exchange rates, you're paying somebody who's sitting in a bureau de change, and they're saying, right, I'll charge you X amount of percentage. They might not give you the right rate. The currency gets defaulted, the face defaced. You're carrying it in your wallet, you lose it. You don't lose that. This is why a lot of people are using electronic platforms, payment links online banking, bank transfers, global market accounts, cross-country. UAE is absolutely phenomenal with that. They're really good at cross-country, cross-transactions. If you're in the right sort of a business arena, you get the right corporate clients, you get all of that. So this, again, as I said earlier, UK subsidiary and a subsidiary of another country in the UK has those issues. I've touched on it earlier. And that's just an explanation of all of that, is with regards to the um, digital assets, how do we integrate it? So we have the tools, valuations, security, ownership, etc. user tools, and we have smart contracts. A quick show of hands, who knows smart contracts on crypto? All right, the big boss on the left-hand side, he knows exactly what he knows about smart contracts because he manages, he's a CEO for a digital asset oasis. So a smart contract is fantastic. What is a smart contract? I'll quickly dwell on it because it's very, very important to, to think about this. This is going to be an eye-opener for a lot of people who don't know about it. A smart contract is, I say, if 
the value of this is that. It's just one example. Then we will execute this. It could be a futures contract on, on digital currency. It could be a contract of execution in terms of a service. So you have that. Once you've done it, what do you need to do? Nothing. Oh my God, don't I love that job? I know, I want that job. Once I've done that, I don't know to do anything. It's just, it just automatically happens. If we were able to do that in our lives, if we were to say, if this happens, that will happen automatically, it will make us super efficient, wouldn't it? We wouldn't, we wouldn't need as many stuff. We wouldn't need as much of a headache. I won't have sleepless nights, and we wouldn't have visions of this audit in the middle of our sleep. So, if I can have smart contracts, which the platform provides on the blockchain, it's absolutely phenomenal. It's powerful, it's delivered instantaneously, without lack of time, without lack of efficiency, and it's done across the globe. We've spoken about the limitations of IFRSs. Digital assets, we've spoken about what UK has done, what UK is doing, where the growth is, what we're looking to do in terms of the security, and also the UAE. I think these are the two leading economies in the world at present when it comes to digital assets. They're working really, really hard. And UAE is working faster. We have more bureaucracy in the, in the UK. We're a bit more of a, a stabler government, I wish. We've got budget coming out today, so that's going to be news later on today for me, for my customers. But yeah, we, the, the two economies that are working is on there. And I said VARA, and I've mentioned the regulators. Uh, again, the people who regulate. What's the strategic importance of having multinational? Speed of doing business, ease of doing business, lack of costs, efficiency, real time. That's exactly what we want. We want everything real time. We, I, am old enough to remember the days when I used to go into the office, switch on a PC, and if the emails are there, I'd ask them. But when I switched the PC off when I left home, that was that. Today, I have that little device over there. It's 24-7. Ping! Everybody expects me to run to them straight away. Whatever part of the world they are. If it's 2 o'clock in the morning in the UK, and it's 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they're expecting an answer. It's a working time. It's 2 o'clock for me. This is the world we live in. It's all about now. It's all about real time. It's all about accessibility and efficiency. This is what we've got. This provides us that across the board. Um, call to action. And this is important. Companies should stay updated on regulatory changes, employ integrated accounting tools, and consider cross-border digital asset strategies to ensure compliance and growth, the keyword. And on that, that's me. Thank you very much for having a fantastic audience. <laughs>